What's up everybody, welcome to Fishing with Frankie. Today we're gonna to do something fun that everybody out there, all you guys, can use. We're gonna do inshore fishing for redfish and snook. Now when I say snook, these are not small snook, we're targeting big snook today. The redfish, just regular sized redfish, but the water temperature is at 70 degrees now, it's been 62 and below for the last month and a half. These big snook are out of the creeks, they usually sit in warm waters up in creeks and ponds and that kind of stuff. They're coming out because in the next month they're gonna start moving to the pass and to the beach and we're gonna cut them off today. These snook, they'll key in on seawalls, they'll key in on mud flats, not grass flats. In the edges of these mud flats, there is grass, and then there's sand holes, and they'll tuck down these sand holes to stay warm. The snook are super lethargic this time of year. It's still cold. When the water temp gets 75 or more, they start getting a lot more active. Um, this time of year, when it's cold, it's rainy, they're really, really slow moving, and they tend to stay in those areas. The reason why, seawalls retain heat, so that keeps them more warm. Mud flats retain heat keeps them more warm. Oyster bars, kind of the same thing. And then on the edges of these mud flats, like I said, these sand holes, the sand holes are warm as well. They'll cruise the sides of these flats and on the edge of these seawalls. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put bait on the bottom to try to get them to pick it up. Now here's a cool tip. Snook have really dark lateral lines. That big black line down the side of the snook, that is called the lateral line. And what they utilize that for, which is why it's so prominent and dark, is they utilize that to feel vibrations. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use grunts and we're gonna cut their tails. First of all, like I said, they're lethargic, so they don't wanna chase after bait. That's gonna keep the bait on the bottom, but also the grunts freak out and they flap their tails around, they can't swim, and that's gonna send a vibration out. Now, snook are known by every fisherman in the world uh, to have a thump, they call it a thump. There's nothing like a snook hit. This time of year, you're not gonna get a thump. They're gonna sit there, they're gonna mouth the bait, and they're gonna pick it up and they're gonna start swimming with it. And we're gonna pick up a few redfish no matter what. Hopefully a really big one. But if we get into a school of reds, that'll be fun too. The target today though, between you and I, all you guys and I, I wanna get a 40 inch snook today in the winter time on a flat. You guys, what I'm tying here, I've got 30 pound fluorocarbon, I've got an FG knot tied to 15 pound braid, and I wanna show you this, I'm tying a loop knot. The reason I'm tying a loop knot is once again, because when this bait is on the bottom and it's shaking around, I want it to have as much movement and natural look as possible. So when you tie this knot, that knot right there, that loop, will allow the bait to move more freely. I really, really love this knot for inshore fishing. A lot of people don't really think that's a big deal. I think it's a massive deal. FG knot, because I use six to eight feet of uh, fluoro. A lot of leader, FG knot slides to the guides easily. A loop knot for a more natural presentation. Cut grunts. All right. And we're off. Hey, Rip. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> He made it. Let's go redfish first. Let's catch three or four redfish here, and then we'll go down and get a big ass snook. We were killing them, even in worse conditions than this. Way worse. That one night when you walked out, yep. it wrapped you up underneath the uh, oh, float buoy over definitely. there. That was badass. My man got down in the freezing cold water. In my bibs. <laughs> Everything. Dude, it, I would. I was so so sorry for him. I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> I held the stuff and he went into the water, out to the swim buoy, underneath the swim buoy, <laughs> in and out and around the swim buoy to fight this fish. He got it. It was like a 38 inch snook. It was worth it. Oh yeah, it was, um, it was borderline 40 for sure. Let's get one for the people today. Let's get a 40 incher today for everybody out there. Get those bibs dirty again. Get, yeah, with this little guy. Come here, little guy. Little Jurassic. You know what, maybe I'll just tease you with a nice red fish first. Yeah. You keep catching your trout over there. Yes, you know. Feels like a nicer fish than your little trout. Oh yeah? yeah. <laughs> nice catfish. Why would you even say that? Check up. What is the belly grabbing out? That's a nice red! Kiss my butt rub! They have blue tails. If you look at their tail real closely, they got blue tails because they eat a lot of crustaceans on the bottom, and that's where that blue comes from. They have this dot. I have no idea what that dot's for, but this is a nice sized redfish for the west coast of Florida area. They don't get really hella big over here. This is a nice fish. You just catch a fish on my rod while I'm flying the drone, Rob? Yep. Sure. Teamwork. I'm going to oh, right no, up. sir. What is it? No, sir. Snooky. Oh, I floundered. Oh, my God, I floundered. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> I never get to catch flounder. You took my rod. I never catch flounder. I'm calling your wife and telling her you stole my rod. It's a red? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's a nice red, bro. Big snook, big snook. Yeah. Yeah. We had a big snook. Big snook. Really big snook. Really, really, really big snook. It came out of the water immediately. Woo! We got a big snook. All right. You got this. Oh, no. Are you going around the boat? Yep. Oh, no. Ready? Get two, three, on, and off. Wait, 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 Big stuff. Get that fucking stuff. Yeah. You know fucking yeah. damn well I got you. You know fucking damn well I got you. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! That was a journey. <laughs> 48 snook. Super important to make sure these big breeder females stick around and make more big girls. That was such a dope shot! Oh, that was no. such a dope ass shot! <laughs> Thank baby. you guys so much for watching. It's been a while since I got a 40 inch fish, 40 inch snook. Um, we want to keep fishing for snook, but the sun's going down. We can't get any more beautiful footage. The whole point of it was to show you guys that what we're teaching you with the cut grunts, cold weather, you know, using the vibration of those baits to get these big snook to eat, it works. And I told you we're gonna have some redfish coming through too, which was fun. We pulled a lot of hooks, we missed a lot of fish, but we still caught a few. It was fun. It was, I mean, that's an epic day. But Jimmy right now is sitting on the live hole where there's a flounder underneath it. And I know for a fact there's a dock over here that usually has flounder. So we're cutting the show short and we're gonna go try to pull out a couple, <laughs> a couple of flounder. You guys subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever you do on YouTube. I, I literally do this every day and I can't remember what to say. Subscribe, <laughs> like, comment, share. Notification bell. Um, where Tap you, it. Yeah, where you Whatever. know that we're putting up videos. We're putting them out consistently now. Um, if you're in Florida, wintertime, use what we showed you. It works. You saw it work firsthand. And we are fishing so close to shore. All these sea walls, everything, you can fish those publicly. So you can utilize everything we showed you and catch these same fish yourself. Granted, a 40 inch snook is going to find structure. It's going to find ropes. It's going to find docks. Good luck getting it out. You might be jumping in the water to get them. But it's worth it. Or on Get a yourself. dock and off a dock. Yeah, on a dock. Yeah, on and off a dock three times <laughs> underneath ropes. Yeah. You guys, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back in a couple days with a tip or with another show. And when you can't find them yourself, call them up. Look them up. We'll I'm take available. you out. I'm available. He's got a beautiful boat. You can't beat a Hell's Bay Marquesa unless you have a Hell's Bay Estero. <laughs> one day. One day, Coming Chris and Wendy. Coming next.